welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. We're doing a Maths A-level video here and it's going to be on differentiation techniques and in particular how to differentiate parametric equations. So what I'd like to be able to do at the end of this video is to find the gradient function uh, of, a, of a curve um, given uh, in parametric equations, so by differentiating those parametric equations. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what parametric equations are. Um, parametric equations were covered in videos that I've made in, uh, in the parametric section of Core 4, so I'm not going to go too much into it, other than to say um, a parametric equation, well, uh, other than to say a Cartesian equation is y is um, some function of x. y is some function of x. For example, y being the subject of the formula is equal to x squared add 4, something like that. That's what's called a Cartesian equation. And parametric equations are when the y and the x depend on a third parameter, which we usually call t. So where y is some function of t, and x as well is some different function of t. Okay, So when x and y both depend on a third variable t, uh, another parameter. And this is, uh, for example, we might have something like x is equal to t squared, and y is equal to 2t, something like that. And this is called parametric. So that, that's a curve given in parametric form. Now, if you want more detail, look at the parametric chapter on this where I go into it in a lot of detail. However, the key idea here is the following. Now, this whole chapter is about differentiating um, uh, these type of functions. So we want to find dy by dx when y is some function of t and x is some function of t, they're two separate equations. And we can use the following idea. We can use the chain rule and we can say that dy by dx, if the gradient function is dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. And because we can kind of think of it as the dt's cancel each other and you left with dy by dx. And what we can do is we can find dy by dt by differentiating this with respect to t. We can find dx by dt by differentiating that with respect to t. And I can uh, flip it, I can use the reciprocal of it and use this equation to find dy by dx. So that's the big idea. Let's do some examples. So we're asked to find the gradient at the point P where T is 2 on the curve given parametrically as follows. So we have x as some function of t, so x is equal to t cubed add t, and y is equal to some other function of t, t squared add 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the chain rule, namely this is the rule we're going to use. We're going to use that, um, I'm going to write it down here, dy by dx is going to be equal to dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. The dt is kind of cancelled, that's how you can think of it. So... Um, here, we're going to work out dx by dt. dx by dt, differentiating with respect to t, would be 3t squared add 1. And dy by dt, in this case, would be equal to 2t. So, let's apply our formula here. So, dy by dx is going to be dy by dt, which is this thing here, 2t, multiplied by dx by dt, which is the reciprocal of this, is 1 over this. So, 1 over 3t squared add 1 i.e. dy by dx is equal to 2t over 3t squared add 1. Now, that is the general gradient in terms of t. What did it ask us? It asked us the gradient where t is equal to 2. So now I've got the gradient function uh, with t's in it. All I've got to do is substitute in t is 2, and I've got my answer. So dy by dx when t is equal to 2, substituting in 2 here, 2 multiplied by 2, divided by 3, 2 squared plus 1. So this would end up being uh, 4 on the top, uh, 2 squared is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, uh, over, uh, plus 1 is over 13. So dy by dx, the gradient at p is equal to 4 thirteenths, and we're done. Okay, next question. Find the equation this time. So we're asked to find the equation of the normal at the point P where theta is pi by 6 
on a curve with the following parametric equations, x is sine theta and y is 5 cos theta. And just, I'm going to get rid of that just a sec. I'm not that just as yet. Okay, so that's what we're asked to do. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to state that here are my uh, parametric equations. x is equal to 3 sine theta and y is equal to 5 cosine theta. Differentiating, so working out dx by d theta this time, our parameter, our third parameter is theta, not t here. We would get 3 cosine theta and differentiating y with respect to t, uh, theta, we would get negative 5 sine theta. Okay, so, and we're going to use the formula that dy by dx is equal to dy by d theta multiplied by d theta by uh, dx. Okay, so dy by dx is going to be equal to dy by d theta, which is this, negative 5 sine theta, multiplied by this, which is the reciprocal of this, 1 over 3 cosine theta. So tidying that up, what do we get? Well, we get dy by dx would be negative 5 thirds, and sine divided by cosine is tan theta. Okay, now we're asked what's the equation of the normal. So let, firstly, we're going to have to find the uh, gradient of the normal. So let's find the gradient of the tangent. dy by dx, when theta is equal to pi by 6, okay, we're going to uh, substitute in pi by 6 in here. We get negative 5 thirds tan of pi by 6. So calculator out, negative 5 thirds tan of pi by 6, so of pi over 6, and we get ourselves negative 5 root 3 over 9, so we get this as negative 5 root 3 over 9. Now that's the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the normal is ne negative reciprocal of this, so the gradient of the normal would be the negative reciprocal of this, so it would be 9 over 5 root 3 which if we rationalise it, multiply it on top and bottom by root 3, okay, would be equal to, um, so on the bottom we'd have 5 uh, multiplied by 3, so we'd have 9 root 3 over 15, which we could simplify as 3, uh, sorry, 3 root 3 even, 3 root 3 over 5. Okay, so that is going to be the gradient of the normal. Now, when theta is equal to pi by 6, we need the x and the y value at point p. So when theta is at, at pi by 6 at p, x is going to be equal to um, 3 sine pi by 6, so 3 sine pi by 6, and y is going to be equal to 5 cosine pi by 6. So x is going to be, if we type that in the calculator, sine of pi by 6 is half, so x is going to be 3 over 2, and cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, so we're going to get 5 root 3 over 2, like that. So at last we're ready for this equation. We're going to use y subtract y1 is mx subtract x1. So we can state that y subtract this here, 5 root 3 over 2, is going to equal 3 root 3 over 5 x subtract 3 over 2 as follows okay and that therefore is um, the equation of our normal now we could obviously tidy it up um, I might times everything by 2 and then times everything by 5 so times everything by effectively 10 what would you get we get 10 y here we get subtract 25 root 3 is equal to 6 root uh, Sorry, this should have been a 3. 6 root 3 x um, sub subtract uh, 3 over 2. And then expanded that out, that would be 10 y subtract 25 root 3 is going to equal 6 root 3 x. Um, and then we're going to have here subtract 9. And tidying it up, we would get that 10 y would be equal to 6 root 3 x. And then we get, sorry, that would have been subtract 9 root 3 even. So we get that multiplied by that would be 9 root 3. So here we get negative 9 root 3, add 25, uh, 9 root 3, and we get ourselves add 16 uh, root 3 even. And we could divide everything by 2, 
and we would get that 5y is equal to 3 root 3x plus 8 root 3. Now, there was no need to do that. We weren't asked to give it in a certain form at all. So really, if I was you, I'd have stopped at that point because that also was right. This was extra working. Sometimes you're asked to show this in an exam. So be prepared to be able to just tidy up fractions and expand out, etc. Okay, and the last one, um, we're asked to find the points of zero gradient on the curve with parametric equations. You do not need to establish if they are maximum or minimum. So we've got x is equal to t over 1 subtract t. And we've got the y is equal to t squared over 1 subtract t. And we know when the gradient is zero is when dy by dx is equal to zero. So let's find an expression for dy by dx. So we're going to use the idea that dy by dx is going to equal dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx by the chain rule. So let's go ahead and actually work out the differentials here. So here, if I was to work out dx by dt, I'm differentiating something that is a quotient. It's u over v. Okay, and here, if I want to work out dx by d, uh, sorry, dy by dt. Again, I'm differentiating something that's a quotient, it's a u over v. So I'm going to use the quotient rule in both cases. Now the quotient rule says, um, I better state the quotient rule, and the quotient rule says in general dy over dx is v u dash subtract u v dash over v squared. So we're going to apply that in this case here. So we're going to do we're going to have a different u for this. So our u here is t and our v is 1 subtract t. So that our u dashed is 1 and our v dashed is negative 1. And in this case here, our u is going to be equal to t squared. So our u dashed is 2t and our v is equal to 1 subtract t. So our v dashed is equal to negative 1. So we're going to apply, I'm just, I might, might put these down here actually. I'm going to apply this formula here. So v u dashed, so v u dashed is going to be this multiplied by this, so it's going to be 1 subtract t, subtract uv dash, so that multiplied by that, so it's going to be subtract t all over uh, t squared, so 1 subtract t all squared. And tidying it up, I would get 1 subtract t, add t, so it would basically be 1 over 1 subtract t all squared. So that would be my dx by dt. My dy by dt is vu dash here, so that multiplied by that, 2t, 1 subtract t, Subtract that multiplied by that, so negative t squared all over uh, v squared, which would be 1 subtract t all squared again. And if I multiply that out, I'm going to get myself um, 2t subtract t squared, okay, all divided by 1 subtract t all squared. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is I want to use the chain rule. So dy by dx, dy by dx would be equal to dy by dt, which is this thing here, which I'm going to write, I'm going to write in factorised form as t, 2 subtract t, all over 1 subtract t, all squared, multiplied by dt by dx, which is the reciprocal of this, which is going to be 1 subtract t, all squared, over 1, like that. So dy by dx, in this case, would therefore be, these would cancel, and would therefore be equal to t to subtract t. So that's my dy by dx, and when is it zero? Well, dy by dx is zero, and that would be true. So t to subtract t would be zero. So our solutions are either t is zero or t is equal to two. Now let's look up here. Um, t can either be zero or t can be 2, and we have to find the x and the y values where that is um, true. So let's do that. So when t is equal to 0, x would be equal to uh, 0 over 1 subtract 0, which is obviously 0. So x would be equal to 0, and y would be equal to Going back up here, it would be 0 over 1 subtract 0, uh, zero 1 subtract 0, which is again 0. Or when t is equal to 2, uh, if I put 2 over 1 subtract 2, the answer would be x is equal to negative 2. And y here, if I put t squared in there, it would be 4 over negative 1, which would be negative 4.
Okay, so the points where the gradient is zero, points where gradient equals zero are zero, zero, and negative two, negative four. And, and so we have answered this question here. We have worked out the points where the gradients are zero, and we're done. So to check you understand this, make sure you do the following exercise. Thanks very much for watching.